Hello guys, and in this video we are discussing geometry and we're moving on to the properties of parallel lines. Before we move on to theory, let's discuss what we see on the sketch. We have a line AB and a line CD and a line EF crossing AB and CD. Additional information given are these two arrows. Now in geometry, when we see arrows like this, we know that those lines are parallel to each other, meaning they run next to each other forever and they will never be able to cross. And the way we write that is we say line AB is parallel to line CD. Now parallel lines form specific properties when a line is cut through it. For now we are going to use numerical values to name these angles. Let's call this angle 1 and the angle over here angle 2. The first property that we will discuss in parallel lines is alternating angles. You can see if I connect the line going to angle 1, crossing down to the 2, and then connecting the 2, it forms something that looks like a Z. These are called alternate angles and they are equal to each other. The way we write them in geometry is we would say angle 1 is equal to angle 2 and the reason is alternate angles. The reason why we can use alternate angles is because the line AB is parallel to the line CD. But there is another set of alternate angles in this sketch. If I call this angle 3 and angle 4 and I connect them, I can now state that angle 3 and angle 4 is also alternate angles. The way to see it, the line running to angle 3, going down to angle 4 and then crossing over here, it creates like an open or wide Z. So angle 3 is equal to angle 4. And the reason is alternate angles. And we can use alternate angles because AB is parallel to CD. The way we use alternate angles in a sum to solve X and Y is simple. X is equal to 60 degrees. And the reason is alternate angles. We can use alternate angles because the line AB is parallel to CD. And the way we see the alternate angles is as follows. Running along the line going towards X and then down towards the 60 you can see that it forms a Z, like this. X is on the inside and 60 is also on the inside of these parallel lines. Therefore these are called alternate angles. They're both on the opposite side of that line, but they are sharing the parallel lines. Now that we have X, we can also find Y. You can use angles on a straight line to find y, so x plus y is equal to 180 degrees, or you can use alternate angles again. So y is equal to 120 degrees, and the reason, alternate angles. The way we see the alternate angles, the line running 
down the parallel line towards Y, connecting with Y going down. You see the blue line forms an opposite sided Z. So this angle Y is equals to 120 degrees. Simplify the sketch. We have Y on that side and we have 120 degrees here and these two lines are parallel. They are on alternate sides of the line connecting them to each other. And the lines connected into each other run parallel to each other. The second property of parallel lines are called corresponding angles. These are angles that are on corresponding sides of the parallel lines and they are also equal. Let's call that angle 1 and angle 2. Angle 1 is equal to angle 2. The reason that we would use is called corresponding angles. And they are corresponding because AB is parallel to CD. So corresponding means they are on corresponding sides. So if I color in or highlight parallel lines, I can see that angle 1 is above that line and angle 2 is above the parallel line. They are sharing this line EF, but both of them are above the line given. Angle 1 and 3 is also equal to each other because of vertically opposite, which we have learned before. If I place a 3 and a 4 there, I can say that angle 3 is equal to angle 4. The reason corresponding angles because the line AB is parallel to CD. Now both of these angles are below the parallel line. So I can see that angle 3 is below AB and angle CD is below and they are sharing the line EF. These two are now equal. And we can continue to follow this pattern to find other angles as well. So angle 5 would be equal to angle 6. Both of the angles 5 and 6 are below the parallel lines and therefore they are also corresponding. Remember, in geometry, it's important to state the reason why that statement is true. The last pair of angles that are equal is 7 and 8. The third property of parallel lines is called co-interior. In the sketch we have line AB parallel to DC and the line EF running through it. We also have the variables X and Y, T and S. Co-interior angles are angles inside, like a bucket, inside of the parallel lines. And these angles add up 180 degrees. They are supplementary. And the reason that we would use is co interior angles. And the reason why we can use co interior is because the line AB is parallel to the line CD. The other pair of angles, S and T, also add up to 180 degrees because they are co interior. So they are both on the inside of this shape formed between the parallel lines. So S plus T 
is equal to 180 degrees per interior angles. The reason why we can use it because the line AB is parallel to line C. Let us see how to use the information we have just learned correctly. In this diagram, we have the line BC parallel to FED. So that line is parallel to this one. And we have an angle of 50 degrees and 60 degrees. And we need to solve all of the variables Y, T, X and Z. We can start with X. The order in which you solve these does not matter. So as you see the information, use it to solve the variables. I can see that x and a 60 degrees form a twisted or inverted z. Now, because they're between parallel lines, these are called alternate angles. So x is equal to 60 degrees, and the reason is alternate angles. And I can use this because BC is parallel to FD. That line is parallel to this line. Now I'm done with x. To move on to y, y is equal to 50 degrees. If I look on the parallel lines, I see that y and the 50 are both on top of the parallel lines. So these are called corresponding angles. So I say they are corresponding. angles and the reason is because BC is parallel to the line FD. We don't only have to use the information um, of parallel lines, we can also use other forms of information. For example, Y plus T plus 60. Y plus T plus 60 is equal to 180 degrees and the reason why that statement is true is the sum of angles within a triangle add up to 180 degrees but we know that y is 50 so I replace y with 50 degrees these add up to 110 so I'm going to move it over immediately solve t. Therefore t is equal to 70 degrees. There are two ways to find z. I can say 60 plus z is equal to 180 degrees, angles on a straight line, but I'm going to use x plus z. So x and z together is equal to 180 degrees. And the reason is co interior angles between the line BC parallel to FD. So they're both on the inside of these parallel lines. So therefore, they add up to 180 degrees. And we know that x is 60 degrees. So we can solve z by subtracting 60 from 180 degrees. So z is equal to 120 degrees.